Hi and welcome to next tutorial. Today we'll be looking at how to create this very simple hexagon designed background using Adobe Illustrator. Now it's really not that difficult, so anyways guys, let's jump in. So the first thing you need to do is you need to create a new document in Illustrator. So I'm just going to create a widescreen 1920 by 1080 document and there we go. Now, the first thing that you need to do is you need to come over here and grab your polygon tool and then click on your screen. Now we want to have six sides and we'll leave the radius at 50 pixels. Cool. So we're just going to change that color and we're just going to pick a bluey kind of color. We're also going to raise that stroke up to about five. Cool. So now once you've done that, we need to put it in the bottom left hand corner. And once we've done that, we then need to go into our effects, distort and transform, and then go into transform. And we need to play around with some of these settings. So the first thing that we are going to do is we are going to click on this reflect white. Make sure you click preview to see what's actually happening. And then we're going to lower the horizontal and vertical movements in here. So the horizontal movement, we are going to bring it down to 70 and the vertical movement, we are going to bring it down to negative 40.5 and we are going to put in probably around about 23 copies. Now you can see here that it goes and makes that pattern. So we actually need a bit more. So we'll go up to about 27, maybe just 28 to be safe. Okay, so now what you can do is you can zoom in and you can see if the pattern actually matches. And if it doesn't, what you need to do is you will need to go back, click on that shape, go back into the transform properties and then adjust these two sliders until it fits perfectly. So anyway, so once we've done that, we've done the horizontal pattern now we need to do the vertical pattern so it's the same process again so all we are going to be doing is we are going to be going into um, so select on our shape first we will go into effects distort and transform transform and we will apply a new effect now we don't want to touch that effect so the next one is we're probably going to have copies of about 20 and all we want to do is change the vertical to we'll try negative 80. And so once I've done that, this pattern starts repeating itself. Now we probably don't need that many copies so I'm just going to bring it down to maybe about 17. And I can still bring it down even more than that. So I'm just going to go back into my transform for my second one and then just bring it back down by, let's say, four. Okay, cool. Now it doesn't matter if it's not perfect because we can always cut it out later on. But anyway, so once we have that, okay, then we need to make the borders white. So to do that, what we need to do is so I'm just going to go into my layers. So our, we're going to highlight our shape down here. We are going to go to object, expand appearance. And once we've done that, now we get all of these shapes selected as well. And so what we need to do is we need to ungroup them. So we can go to object, ungroup, and we can just keep clicking ungroup until, they, until you can't click anymore. And now you can actually click on these shapes and you can see here that everything is ungrouped. So we're going to change the, um, the borders to white. So what it is we are going to be doing is we're just going to be finding one stroke. And once we have the stroke selected, we can then go to select same fill color. And now this will highlight all of the strokes here. So we actually want to join this up together. So we are going to go into our Pathfinder tools. And if you don't have Pathfinder, you can go to Windows Pathfinder. And we're just going to click over here, the first one, which is Unite. So now we've got all of that as one shape. 
so we don't have to mess around with that anymore. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to highlight that and I'm going to click on my colors and I'm just going to change that to white. Cool. So now once we've done that, we then need to start to select individual shapes. Now we can do this manually if you really wanted to, but there is a better way of doing this and this is um, by using scripts. So the script that I'm using is this script here and so I'll link this in the description below. But basically it's a random select script and all you have to do is you have to um, download it and then put it into your scripts folder for Adobe Illustrator. So once you've got that done, all right, then what we need to do is we need to go back into our layers and we don't want to highlight this anymore. So what it is that we are going to be doing is we are going to be highlighting everything else. And then we are going to be running the script. So we'll go to file scripts and we'll go random select and we'll pull let's say 15%. So now you can see that 15% of those hexagons are being populated and it's automatically selected them for me. So now all I have to do is I just have to go into my color settings and I'm just going to lower that color down slightly. Cool. So now I'm going to do that again, but I'm going to click on one of these ones and then I'm going to go to select same fill color and then I'm going to repeat the process again. So I'll go to random select. This time I'll do 25% and then I'm going to change it to a color even darker than that. So all I have to do is go back into my fill, drop down the color and cool. There you go. So to save this as a background, we just want to create a clipping mask that will make sure that it's a rectangle. So to do that, all we need to do is we need to just create a new layer and then we can go and grab our rectangle tool, draw a rectangle, which will be 1920 by 1080. Okay. And once you have those two highlighted, all you have to do is just right click on this and go make clipping mask. And so once you've done that, you can save that if you really want to, or you can save it for the next step, which is to create another bigger pattern where we start to scale this down. So if you wanted to export this, you can just go to file export. You can take it to Photoshop. You can do whatever you want with it. But if you wanted to turn this into a seamless pattern, what we can do is we can firstly undo this clipping mask. We can then go to, so we're just going to get rid of that uh, rectangle. So I'm just going to make sure we don't need the rectangle. So I'm just going to highlight it all. Go to object, pattern, make. And now once we're in here, what we can do is we can go to, we can go to our grid and we want to change it to brick by column. And now you have to align these parts over here. And so first untick this, and then you can scroll on your mouse and you want to kind of zoom in as well. But if you can kind of just get, get it to just sort of fit and then we'll fix up the, the rest in a, in a bit. So I'm just going to zoom in and I just want to make sure that those line up. Okay, cool. So once you're happy with that, then you can press done. So I'm just going to zoom back out again. And now what you can do is you can draw another larger rectangle. Okay. And then you can go into your properties and change the fill to 
that pattern that we've just created. Now, the cool thing is that we can go into here and we can actually go into transform scale and we can now scale it down. So every time that you draw another rectangle, it now has a scaled down version of that pattern. So now you can draw another. So if I just create a new layer, if I draw it on here, so now I've got a really cool 1920 by 1080 hexagon seamless background. And then you can write some text if you really wanted to, or you can take this into Photoshop. Cool. So anyways, guys, that's it for this tutorial. I hope you've learned something and I will see you next time.